So yeah, it's been a while since the last infamous webcomic review. As such, I need to address a couple of things that have cropped up. Now, many of you have been very patient in waiting for these videos, and for that, I'm very grateful. Others of you have not been so patient to the point where I'm actually taking time out of this review to talk about it. Yes, I'm aware, some of you want Sonic Chew Review Part 2. And yes, I will cover it if the first video reaches 100 likes, like I asked. Yes, I also have a few other infamous webcomics on deck, including Tails Gets Trolled, Control Alt Delete, and even the works of Andrew Dobson. Let me say this once again, since it was not so clear when the video series began. Infamous webcomics reviews has no set schedule. The videos are done when they're done, and will be released when they're done. In case you haven't noticed, I've been more than a little busy the past few months. If you haven't noticed, wake up already! I platinumed Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, released Chapter 14 of Doomsayer, tweaked my website, started to offer commissions, made a few more videos, and even cleaned my room. <laughs> anyway, tone in- <laughs> Fuck. Anyway, I can't do the fucking Linkara voice. Anyway, tune in next time for the next episode, when it's ready. Don't ask me when the new episodes are coming. Linkara. So, if you're like me, you weren't that familiar with this guy before you came across a channel called Oni Plays, or Oni Plays, I'm not sure. But Linkara is a character played by one Lewis Lovehog that was associated with the ThatGuyWithTheGlasses.com crew back in the day, which eventually evolved into Channel Awesome. All right, I am only watched Nostalgia Critic back in the day, I never really watched any of the offshoots, you know, but... Linkar is basically Nostalgia Critic for comic books, was sort of the gimmick. So his whole gimmick is that he's the angry reviewer of comic books, right? That kind of thing. Back in the day when we had the angry reviewers because of all those AVGN clothes. Now, the thing about Linkar is that he is not very good at taking jokes. Um, it's illustrated um, perfectly in this clip. Have you sent the one play or, or one play. play fan beat game? Yeah, the, uh, no, because I have zero desire to ever think about or talk about Oni plays. I don't even know what that is. They are a YouTuber who is the one who's re who's pop who who makes who constantly mocks that you um you had you 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 could you do me makes fun of me and and apparently they do an impression of me that is that that, that everyone loves that everyone has to point out wow his impression of you is so accurate. And he's the one who popularized people calling me the Lightbringer, based off of my crappy old webcomic. But honestly, I don't think Linkar is a bad guy. I do think that his leaked search history is a bit concerning. Um, a lot of people kind of rag on him for uh, having a trans woman in his search, or that he dated a trans woman at one point, which... Honestly, I don't really give a shit about that. What I'm more concerned about are the illegal things he searched up, okay? But we're going to take a look at this comic he made way back called The Lightbringer. And we're going to just give it a read and try to give it a review. Okay? Um, also, infamously, Linkar did do a bit like that at the start of this video. <laughs> when he was doing his Power Rangers review series. Anyway, well, let's get into it. Alright, so when I initially uh, started making this video, what I wanted to do was something similar to what I did with the Sonichu video and put my live reaction in there. However, um, sifting through the footage, I realized that uh, it's taken me um, about 15 hours to get through this comic because there is so much dialogue. So instead, I'm going to do a standard review where I give you the summary, my opinions, and you know just the overall review. So we're going to go with that method. Um, I think you guys might like that better. A little bit more concise, a little bit more condensed, a little bit more succinct, you know? So that's what we're going to do. So let's get into the Lightbringer by Linkara review. When first checking out Lightbringer, there are two things you're probably going to notice. One, the crude MS Paint style art, which I will be talking about later. And two, how many gosh darn words there are. Now, during my Sonichu review, where I put a live reaction to myself reading it, I kept reiterating the fact that comics are a visual medium, and that the words are supplemental. It's more important to hone in on the visual story aspect of comics rather than the words, but I'll get to that when I go over layout critiques. First things first, what's the story here? So, Lightbringer follows the story of Carter Granholm, 
Carter is the owner of a furniture store in Pharaoh City. Ever since he was a child, he had the power to create light from his body. Carter's backstory is basically the same as Batman. Pharaoh City is a shithole, his parents get murdered by the gangs, this gang is also known as the Slavers and operates a human trafficking ring. For some reason, Carter owes them money. Whatever, who cares. This is not a particularly unique story. While reading through it, I couldn't help but notice how generic and cliche the story was. Sonichu was a disaster, but at least it was an interesting disaster. Anyway, one day Carter sees a woman getting assaulted and runs away. He reflects on his actions and remembers his parents were heavy into lecturing him that violence is a big no-no. Basically, he says, fuck that, and starts kicking ass. The Lightbringer has brung the light. The reveal is actually pretty solid, even with the cruder art style, which, once again, the art will get its own section. After the Lightbringer starts fighting crime, we have a scene that's reminiscent of Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, which is really, really funny because Linkara is known to have a hate boner for Frank Miller. You may also be noticing at this point that there are more words on these pages than a PhD-level dissertation. While I understand at times there are moments you need to add more words to explain lore or even to develop characters better, there is no fucking way this couldn't have been cut down. I should also note on the website this series was hosted, Linkara was adding additional notes to each page, sometimes admitting his art was rough, other times wishing he could have written even more words. Honestly, if you want to write a prose fiction book, just write a prose fiction book. Or a light novel, at least. Anyway, moving along with the story. So the police chief becomes aware of Lightbringer and wants to be the Commissioner Gordon to Lightbringer's Batman. This scene also contains the single best panel in the series and what I'm absolutely using for the thumbnail. I love it so much. Look at it. Oh my god, it's beautiful. So, we go back to the furniture store and the woman that Lightbringer saw getting assaulted actually ends up getting a job there. Fast forward this plot thread a little and she's basically like Lightbringer's oracle if you're going to keep up these Batman parallels. Also should note, Lightbringer eventually brought up what he saw to her and that she was trained in martial arts or whatever, so... Anyway, the Lightbringer and Police Chief meet and form an alliance. They then plan to take out the Slavers for good. Lightbringer captures the dude from the first few pages and does the old Spider-Man hang-up thug upside down to interrogate thing and finds out where the big boss is located. Oh yeah, he like, uh, force chokes him too or whatever. Whatever. The police chief arrests the snake tattoo guy, but not before him and Lightburger have more dialogue than an average episode of Gilmore Girls. Anyway, some spec op dudes join the team and it's on to taking down the big bad boss. There is so much dialogue in the first page of the third issue that at this point I wish I never started the series. But I soldiered on. They basically just make a plan of attack. Oh, and uh, Lightbringer also tells Hannah about uh, him running away when she was being attacked in this chapter. Pretty sure this is when she gets promoted to sidekick too. Who cares, this story is so generic. Which is by far my biggest problem with this comic. Again, the art itself will have its own section, but a lot of people will say the art may be a bigger problem. I disagree. Sonichu actually has some legitimate fans, non-ironically. What separates something like Sonichu or even something like Tails Gets Trolled for something like Lightbringer is that they don't feel like rehashes done to death a million times, much like Lightbringer does. But moving on along with the story, so basically Lightbringer goes in there and kicks everyone's ass. There's also some weird cropping going on in one of these pages, I, I don't know. He also finds out the boss, a guy named General Weris, is actually using his illicit funds to reinvest good things into Pharaoh City like infrastructure and charities. I was thinking that maybe Linkar was intending to pose a moral dilemma question to the readers, you know, the Machiavellian concept of ends justifying means, but the execution is rough, especially when there are more words than images on the page. Oh yeah, and General Weris says, quote, My fetishes can be a little violent, end quote. Which is a line that has me very concerned considering Linkara's leaked Gooner search history. But whatever, moving on. Lightbringer catches the guy and saves the day. Oh, and this is when Hannah becomes the sidekick too. So after the first story arc, we get some classic superhero universe crossover bullshit. My favorite. That, that's sarcasm, by the way. I hate that stuff. So, there's this guy called the Smiling Man, who is after Lightbringer or whatever. Hannah, who's 17, by the way, orders a breast enlargement device. Later on, Linkara makes her have a birthday uh, because he, quote, wouldn't feel guilty about it. 
I, I don't know. Um, w once again, Lee Gunner search history raised concerns. Whatever. But anyway, the smiling man beats the shit out of Lightbringer and steals the breast enlarger device and disappears through dimensions or whatever. And Linkara says, haha, go read my other comic or whatever. Bullshit. Fuck you. I want one concise storyline, not this universe bullshit. Moving on. What a shitload of fuck. What were they thinking? Okay, so then there's like this Jack the Ripper guy and he's all evil and stuff. The Lightbringer and the Chief talk for like 10 centuries. Then there's like this asshole journalist who wants an interview, but Lightbringer refuses. Although their conversation is practically an interview that would need to be heavily condensed to fit word count requirements. Then for some reason, Linkara writes about Watchmen and how he likes to meet ride Alan Moore. Whatever. Lightbringer fights the Jack the Ripper guy, but he gets away, and then there's a page that's, well, just look at it. Look at it. Lightbringer finds him and beats him and blah, blah, blah. Because at this point, I realized the biggest problem with this story is that it was boring. So boring. The absolute worst thing you can do is make something boring. Even if something is objectively bad, if it's at least interesting, there can be some enjoyment in it. For instance, take a look at the cult classic film The Room. Pretty bland and lame plot, but the interest is in Tommy Wiseau, his terrible acting and the story around it. There's nothing fascinating about Lightbringer whatsoever. It's an absurdly generic superhero comic with rough artwork, poor pacing, beginner paneling, which remains consistent throughout, and a story that's so full of itself even someone as pretentious and unbearable as Vosh would call it pretentious and unbearable. The only thing that brought this comic any attention was some of Linkara's antics online. He's a character for sure. It's a shame that none of that character came through in his storytelling here. I was honestly disappointed reading this that the most interesting thing was an interdimensional breast enlargement device. Like, come on, the rest feels like it's almost AI generated with how boring it is. So what's the rest of the story? Guy called the Darkbringer shows up. He's like evil Lightbringer if you couldn't tell. The art did get a little better at this point, just a little bit, but we'll talk about that later. The Darkbringer takes Hannah and another employee of Cole's store hostage. Lightbringer shows up, big fight, tough at first, but a character literally named Linkara shows up. They team up to beat the Darkbringer and the day is saved. Linkara is from some other comic, more superhero universe bullshit. At this point, I wanted to tap out. I'll admit the art was getting slightly better, but the insanely wordy and hard to read page layouts haven't changed. I will once again reiterate what I said in my Sonichu video. If you want to draw comics yourself, you should do thumbnail sketches with the word balloons before you start drawing the actual page. This will help you visualize the flow and may be a good way to cut down the script and work on the pacing and paneling. Thumbnails. Always thumbnails. So anyway, I just started speed reading at this point. So, there was a Legion of Doom or some shit, uh, there was a trial for the General Weris guy, and there's like a Catwoman clone and a hot air balloon of all things. Then for the last two issues, Linkara actually hired an artist to draw it. The big problem with that, even now having legible artwork and a solid layout, also less words, is that you need to read the prior issues to know what's going on. And I had already abandoned hope by then. There's like a movie or something and then it ends. I don't care. Overall, it's not the worst thing I've ever read. I mean, I have read Sonichu. The problem with it is that it's boring and generic. Also, the superhero universe crossover shit. I hate that stuff so much. Uh, 5 out of 10. At least you tried. Linkara himself has gone on record to say it was bad, so at least he's self-aware. Anyway, moving on to the art. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this video. Make sure you don't turn on ad blocker. <laughs> So another uh, thing that I should mention about the Linkara lore is at a certain point he made a video complaining about people using ad blocker on his blip.tv channel. It was a whole thing. Ads worked differently back in the day. It wasn't like AdSense now where you just got to get a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch time. Yeah, he made this whole video where he was ranting like, guys, you got to turn off ad blocker. I don't need my ad revenue. I don't give a shit if you use ad blocker, but YouTube, I think, blocks it now. Whatever, you know. Best thing you could do for me is just like and subscribe. You know, leave some comments, whether that be for or against me. I love reading all of them. But uh, let's continue this review. So, Lightbringer had two artists, actually. First, Linkara himself, and for the last two issues, a guy named Chad Rocco. Linkara credited the artwork under a pseudonym rather than just saying story and art by Lewis Linkara Lovehog. Why? I don't know. He even changed it at one point. Uh... 
I don't get it, whatever. Anyway, yeah, his art is a bit rough, but for the most part, it's very legible. The big problem is that his layout skills and not being a very good editor when it comes to writing dialogue. Word balloons take up more than half the page, which takes away from the art heavily. There were actually improvements to the art as it went along, which is by far my favorite thing to see in indie comics, or just comics in general. Like I said in the previous video, I think drawing comics are actually a better way to improve than traditional art classes. He went from these really weird looking figures to getting anatomy pretty decent. His perspective also improved as the story went on. Would have been interesting to see him do the last two chapters. The color choice is fine and for the most part I can tell who's who. Some of the cropping and paneling is confusing and the order of word balloons are at times unclear. But it's honestly fine, I feel like the story was the main thing holding this comic back. As for the Chad Rocco chapters, they're actually quite well done, albeit a very heavy shift in style. The lines are bold and characters are more expressive, the panel layouts are legible and not super static like Linkara's run. It also seems like Linkara reined it in when it comes to writing dialogue. There are even pages without any words on them at all. The only problem with the Chad Rocco chapters is that you need to read the preceding 13 Linkara chapters, and by the time you get to these, you will have probably already given up. If I was going to rate the art, uh, Linkar gets a 6 out of 10, could have upped it to a 7 if he kept at it, you know, I wonder if he did, I hope he did, you know. Rocco gets an 8 out of 10, it's a significant spike in quality, but it's just a personal bias to the bold chunky style holding it back, I don't know, it's just, I don't like those really thick outlines, it's not for me. What were you guys rate it? Tell me in the comments below. As for the layout and presentation, you know how you actually read the comic? I don't like it. First of all, your Jordans are completely fake. No. First of all, the site it's hosted on makes you click through to the next page. I prefer a straight scroll down per chapter, like how I presented my own comic on my own website. I also don't like how there wasn't a single double page spread, as well as the crossover bullshit that makes you read five different series to get the full picture. I hate that so much. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Should also mention the fan arts. So, going through the comic, there were pages with dedicated fan arts, which, what the hell guys, can we get some Doomsayer fan arts going on? Please send them to me. Uh, these may have been some nice palette cleansers between Linkara's pages, but they just broke up the entire flow of the already flowless story. Sometimes multiples in a row. If you were to put fan arts in your comic, I'd recommend compiling them at the end of the chapter or volume. We'll say though, a lot of the fan arts are very well done, so uh... Let's get some Doomsayer fan arts going, huh? I've only gotten two pieces of fan art from one person one time, but I look at them all the time. Like, all the time. Why don't you guys join them in being my favorite person ever, huh? Anyway, overall, Lightbringer was bland. Should have been called Snorebringer, because I was falling asleep reading it. I'm not even kidding. Not the worst thing ever, but possibly the most boring thing ever. Generic superhero story, crude art, bad layout, and... Oh, so many words. So many words. There were so many words. Feeling a light to decent four on this. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. And what should I review next? This has been John, Lightbringer, by Linkara, forever.